Okay, everyone, welcome back to another part of Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, I'm actually just like filming this straight after the last part. So what happened in the last part was I was getting really close to Natsuki. Uh, we were baking. We had like a really cute moment together. Then Sayuri showed up and then I told her that I loved her. I still don't know if I like that. Like maybe I should have went with the like you're my dearest friend option. But like I guess we're a couple now. So because I said I love you. So anyways, uh, it's the day of the festival. Of all the days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. Yep, we're supposed to be walking to school together. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but I decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the cupcakes by myself by carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki's already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki before the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. Sayori and Natsuki. <laughs> okay. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Menace! Where's the music at? You're the first one here. Thanks for being here early. Okay, the, there should be music. Thanks for being here early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. Am I going for Monica still? So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayuri with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days this important should be a little... Try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayuri told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for me, her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Ah ha ha. You should take a little responsibility for her, Menace. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. What? You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But... I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sayuri really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason, I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out onto the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayuri's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Percentage? Hmm. Get out of my head, 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 get out, 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 get out of my head. Before I do what I know is best for you, get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show how much I love you, get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished, it just stops moving. Uh... What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Minus? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayuri's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayuri, so... Ah, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself! Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? Should have tried a little bit harder for Sayuri. It's not a big deal, at least to wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school to make her makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayuri's house and knock on the door. Why is there no music, bro? I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayuri? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house? That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Dude, did I turn the music off? The music's on! Okay. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on the door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy! There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. So oh my god! Oh, dude, this is giving me chills, bro. Oh, there's the music. Next. 
deception has occurred. File games blind. See trace back text for details. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sorry you wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday. I told Sari I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best for her and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her? I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Sayuri needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and rem remained friends with her like it had always been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I only had one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now? I can never take it back. Never. 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 Ne never. End. Oh, hello there, Sayori. Doki, Doki. Let's start game, I guess. Blah, 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 blah. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is my neighbor and good friend since we were children. No, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. If she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let catch up to me. Oh my god. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I met some girls or something like that, but I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. School day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs? There really aren't any that interest me. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Menace! Monica? Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Ah, yeah it has. Monica smiles sweetly. We don't know each other, well. We rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for some supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? Guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Aha, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really, you quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for their events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um, haha. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know? Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member is a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, Menace. 
By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Ah, I mean, I guess so, but in that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please. Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Aha, awesome. You're really sweet, Menace, you know that? It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for materials another time. You're more important. Hmm. And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back, and I brought a guest with me. Eh? Holy shit. A, a guest? Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Don't be mean, Natsuki. By, but anyway, welcome to the club, Menace. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess. You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. Natsuki? The girl with the sour attitude whose name is apparently Natsuki is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Uh, anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It, it's nice to meet you. So Yuri's the vice president now. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So, I ran into Menace in the classroom, and he decided to come check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica, didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to, well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? So there's no cupcakes now. Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Menace? And the girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So, I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all their effort to start something brand new, especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Ah, I, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, that, that's not it. Insulted Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Menace, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half-jokingly. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds comfort in the world of books, not people. But, you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination and completely throw you for a loop? So that was foreshadowing earlier when she said that. Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimum level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Aha, I expect that from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really, if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. 
Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What, what gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud and Give It Back. Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Ah, not a very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. You have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Uh, I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Huh? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Uh, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of vice president, after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. You agree as well, Menace? Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh, what's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have been may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. Still have other clubs to look at, and um, I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but, I'm sorry. I thought, hmm. Eh. The girl exchange the girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Menace. The thing is. We don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. And I've been trying really, really hard to find new members. And if we don't find one more before the festival... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I'd feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? You really mean that, Menace? Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. Menace, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this, you're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Ah, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment? Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Menace, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing the poem tonight. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? What the... Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Oh, what the fuck? Hmm. Okay, we're gonna... Oh, pe Wait, my saves are gone. What? Okay, we're gonna save then. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna end this one here. Uh, yeah, shit went crazy. I, I knew there was like a twist, but... Yeah, that, that shit... It, it, it's going wild now. Things are slightly different. Monica's kind of weird. Like, things are glitching out. Uh, anyways, I if you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe for more content. Uh, and if you have any other game suggestions for me, leave those down in the comments down below. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.